Hello, now the reason I'm making this video today is because despite there being endless YouTube video tutorials out there, I don't think a lot of them explain the reasons why they advise you to do this. Now a bit of background for you, I've been a OnePlus 5T Android phone user for seven years and I recently upgraded to a Google Pixel 7a. Out of the box, loved the phone, loved Android 14 and the speed and the camera and everything else. However, the battery life was shocking. So much so that I would go to bed at night, wake up eight hours later and the battery would drain whilst idle about 15 to 20%, which is unacceptable. So I went through the steps that I'm sure we've all applied to try and preserve our battery life, such as disabling location and turning off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth scanning, making sure that notifications were only enabled for essential apps, basically WhatsApp, turning off background data usage, making sure that background battery usage was restricted to only the essential apps. I had adaptive connectivity turned on. I had adaptive battery turned on. Basically, I'd turned off pretty much everything and my phone was basically like a Nokia 3210 instead of a smartphone. However, despite me doing all of this, it made no difference whatsoever, so much so that I seriously considered sending the phone back and thought to myself, I can't buy a Google Pixel phone, I'm going to have to look for an alternative model. And then I started speaking to people on Reddit, specifically a guy from the UK who had been encountering the exact same issue as me and his advice was turn off 4G. Now this might seem a little bit counterintuitive because of course you buy a 5G enabled phone and SIM card because you want to take advantage of those faster data speeds but specifically in the UK the 5G network isn't as expansive as in some other countries so it will continually chop and change between 4G and 5G networks and despite enabling adaptive connectivity it doesn't save your battery life. He also told me that the Samsung modems in many Google Pixel devices is terrible for 5G networks, hence why you get so much battery drain when you're connected to 5G. So all I had to do was turn off the 5G option for my network provider within settings, right? Well, unfortunately, no, because that option no longer exists. It did exist when I used to have my OnePlus phone, but unfortunately on a Google Pixel device using Android 14, that option is no longer available or visible. So there's this funky number code, which you've got to dial. I'll put it in the description below and it takes you to some backdoor phone testing menu. So if you click on phone information within here, down the bottom here, you can see set network preferred type. Now, at the moment, I've got it set to LTE, which is basically 4G only. When you have 5G enabled, you'll see it says, I think it's NR. Yeah, it'll have NR in there. So make a note of what your existing preferred network type is. Just either write it down or take a screenshot of it so you can change it back if you ever want to go back to 5G and everything else. And then find the preferred network type that is similar to what you've got but without the NR in it. So in this instance I've gone with LTE and WCDMA and by doing this it has disabled 5G. So now I'm sure you're wondering what the outcome of this was and I tell you something, wow, what a difference it made. After charging my phone to 100% and I'm not lying to you, I got about 36 hours of battery life with 10 hours of screen time. Now, admittedly, I am not a massive social media user. I don't play games on my phone. I watch quite a lot of YouTube, Netflix. I browse Chrome and the web, read a lot of emails and play Spotify. That's my general usage. But to have three days battery life, whereas before I was getting less than a day, was a huge and significant improvement. And even in the last seven days or so, I've started slowly switching on some of those features that I'd previously disabled. I'm talking location. I've now got that constantly active. I switched on Wi-Fi and Bluetooth scanning. I've enabled many more notifications for certain apps than what I had previously. I've enabled um, 
the background battery usage for a few more apps as well so that they're able to update in real time and i'm still getting really good battery life even after enabling all of these features usually around two to three days battery life with about 10 hours screen time i'm absolutely chuffed with that i really hope this video has helped some of you out there and if it has done kindly give me a thumbs up and drop a comment down below letting me know the good news feel free to check out the rest of my channel i primarily do music reaction videos but i've been so chuffed with me applying these steps on my new phone and the results and the battery life that i've been getting i had to make this video i had to share it and as i say i hope it does help some of you out there now and in the future but until next time thank you so much for watching look after yourselves and hopefully i'll see you very soon bye for now people